gain influence. Everybody wants to be outstanding, but no one wants to stand out. So one of the keys in gaining influence is you know you got to know the secrets of gaining influence. And publishing is one example of how to do that. But you have to know the right way to go. And it reminds me of a story. There was a lady named Mildred. Mildred was at a church. She was a church gossip. Gossip. Anybody know anybody who gossips? She was the she was the world's greatest gossip. And she thought the world, the church revolved around her. And all the members, like in some Baptist church, other church, they were scared of her. So when she messed up one day, she uh she uh found a guy named James. He had jumped, just joined the church. And he was he was very quiet, very result, result, reserved. And in the middle of the congregation, she made the accusation in front of everybody that James, you're an alcoholic. Everyone knows you're an alcoholic because your pickup is parked in front of the neighborhood bar. And everyone knows what goes on in the bar. James looked at her for a minute, stared at her, quietly walked away. Later on that night, James took his pickup truck, parked in front of Mildred's house, and walked home. <laughs> Everyone knows who goes inside of the house. So what I'm seeing is, in gaining influence, you got to know where to look at all times. So now, what I'm going to try to do is, I'm going to give you everything you need to know so that you guys can gain influence. And one of the things about, even though America's known, right now is known is, we don't like reading. We still have a fascination with authors and with writers. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share this secret with you. In, 19, in 1998, 1997, I was sitting in a classroom just like, like you. I was at Tuscan College working on, my, working on my master's degree. So I was, as you would do, I was reading this book, and I told my wife, you know what? I can write that. I can write a book. She said, yeah. She laughed at me. Yeah, you could. I wrote the book in two months. And it was published in, in less than a year. The book was my cup one thought. Now something something happened with me writing that book. My life changed. Remember, I'm an engineer. I work for the Department of Engineering. I'm an engineer, known for engineer. But while I was, I was writing about an issue, how do how do how do families balance work and balance families? When I wrote that book, I found that my coworkers. We were peers. They were coming to my office and saying, Daryl, how do I deal with my family problems? I found myself, I, was, uh, I went to Washington, D.C. I had to do a, a seminar. And lo and behold, who shows up? Black Entertainment TV. So I was on national, national TV. I was, doing, I was doing a book. I was getting calls from AP. USA Today was writing me all because of one book. Because of that book, I had the opportunity uh, to write a column, 200 newspapers, 50 million people. Sitting in Knoxville, Knoxville, living in Knoxville, Tennessee, in Oak Ridge, and the world didn't even know. That is what's so powerful about writing a book. And matter of fact, it's not really about the book. It's about, we call it intellectual properties, it's about information. And I've written Several books I'm, I'm constantly writing, but it, it's how you process information. This is a paperback book. This is a paperback book. This is a hardback book. And now the first book, the book I wrote, a Publishing for Professionals, it started out as a plain old report. And my mom, we, she was at my house one day. She said, she said what are you doing? I said, well, I'm a, I was hole punching reports. I said, I'm, I'm making these reports to sell. And she laughed at me. And I sold them for ten dollars. Sold them all out. Because people are fascinated with information. So you go from this, somebody recorded me, to this, to this, to this. It's all about information. And right now, you you're in a wonderful world in terms of being able to 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 
to take advantage of the technology. So I'm going to briefly go through what the publishing world is going through, and then we're going to go into those steps, and I'm going to take questions about doing it, okay? When we talk about publishing, we talk about making available to the public. Have you ever written anything that was available to the public? Reports for school, if you ever did, raise your hand. So in some, in some facet, you've all been published. The normal process, the traditional way, means 20 or 30 years ago, was that you'd come up with a concept, you would, you would, you would research it, do the research on it, develop the, that, that concept, you'd write, a, you'd write a, a, a book, or we call it a manuscript, you would find a literary agent who would be your broker to a publisher, you would find a publisher uh, who, would, who would say, you know what, that, that's a wonderful thing to have, I want you, you sign the contract, they send you your royalties, and you're on over. Sounds easy. But in the real world, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, in talking about the publishing world, uh, the publishing is a business. You know, I write all the time. I have my Department of Energy job. Because only one out of six writers can do it full time. I mean, uh, publishers are operating on what we call the uh, 2080 rule. Anybody know about the 2080 rule? What's the 2080 rule? I hit my class. Come on now. What's the 20 rule? Do they publish 20 out of every 80 submissions or something? Okay, you're close. Means that 20% of the 20% uh, of the books are prov providing 80% of the revenue. So they're not interested in new in the, today. They're not interested. If you write so wonderful. You're a new writer. They're not interested in that. They're interested in Dennis Rodman or what T.O. has to say a Lady Gaga, because they have a follower. It's all about having a follower. So they're very interested in those, those individuals.